give me a second, y'all. So I'm just giving it a few minutes to see if anybody else wants to join in. I did a live a few minutes ago and I only been on for like five minutes, so. So I want everybody to come in. This is really just to give y'all an update on the event for tomorrow. But in the meantime, uh, we gonna do a little, oh dude, we gonna do a little SJ5. So I got a little story for y'all. If uh, For those of you who showed up, a little early to this live. So the Ebo uh, that came for the end of the year Ebo is the Ebo Erosun Toda or Erosun Ogunda. Um, Erosun Ogunda really talks about um, where Iku Fitibo came to be, which is unexpected death. Um, and so it's a thing that we all have to be careful of. Agboato, Ashere Wari Wofun. We all, no matter who we are, uh, wh whether we feel like we are the best person out there walking and we've done no wrong, which is nobody, or if we are the person who's always doing dirt on the street, or as most of us are, the person who's in between, we all have to be aware that death can come at any time. There's nobody that actually gets out of this alive, right? Um, but in that, we uh, strive to be here for as long as possible, as healthy as possible. Uh, and so we come to give homage to Ogun, to thank Ogun uh, for not falling into tragedy, for not swimming in our own blood, but also uh, to ask Ogun to continue to protect us in the new year, to ask Alokun uh, as well to continue to protect us in the new year, to give us stability in the new year. Uh, we come to, uh, before anything else, to thank Eshu and uh, ask Eshu to open up our roads and open up our doors in the new year. So on tomorrow, December 30th, before we close the year of 2022, as up and down as a year as it has been, uh, the Temple of Ile Ire will be making a bow uh, to Eshu, Ogun, Olokun, and the Orisha Aj. Uh, with that being said, I have a little Eshe file for those who are here. So, pardon me, take my gum out of my mouth. It says, Erosun Ogunda, Erosun Atapo, also known as the Odu, called Atapo Momolere, Omobuele Jo in heaven was specialized in making divination for people who wanted to become prosperous on earth. When he saw that all his colleagues had left for earth, he decided that it was time that he too came to the world. Before leaving, he sought clearance from God, who advised him to help himself as he had done so often for others by going for divination. He replied the Almighty Father by saying that all the Awos he would have approached had left. He besought the Almighty Father to bless him, and he gave him blessing, but warned that he should complement his blessing with divination and sacrifice in order to ensure success for himself on earth on account of the overbearing influence of Eshu on earth. Just before leaving for earth, he went to his guardian angel, who warned him against the consequences of leaving for earth without making any sacrifice. His guardian angel, however, advised him to travel with a bag full of food to give to those who would accost him during his journey to earth. Even that simple advice he refused to heed and subsequently left for the world, empty-handed without making any sacrifice. On his way to the world, he met Emu, who asked him for food. He brushed Emu aside and said he had no food to give. Emu therefore refused to follow him to the world, and he replied that he was not interested in his company. Next, he met Eshu, who asked him who he thought he was for daring to leave the world without feasting anybody else in heaven. He promised to give food to Eshu upon him getting to the world. The next divinity he met was Eleni Ni, uh, better known as the divinity of obstacle. It says who asked him for food. Once again, he replied that he had no food to give. Finally, he met the lunatic who also asked him for food, but he replied that he had no food to offer. He eventually entered the world where he began by muddling up his entire life. He was very crude in his own behavior, and people never took him seriously. Whenever God wanted to send him a gift, the obstacle divinity would divert it elsewhere. Eshu also made him 
bemused his life by advising him to be wearing white robes and praying every morning and evening with the false assurance that all would be well with him. That was Eshu's ploy for making it impossible for him to embark on his ephod practice, which would have enabled him to have insight into his problems. The other eye woes admonished him for deriding ephod and not having any regard for the divinities. Meanwhile, the obstacle divinity sent a wife to him who gave birth to a sickly child that made him spend all the little bit of money he had. At a point, the child died after he had spent his last money on him. That was when he decided to wander into the forest to commit suicide. At the same time, Eshu decided to make him have a bird's eye view of the prosperous life he would have enjoyed if he had paid for it in heaven. Before he could commit suicide, Eshu made him to swoon into delirious ecstasy. In that apparition and dream, he saw his dead child in the street strewn with every item of wealth and prosperity. He found himself in the midst of people who were rejoicing with him. In that state of euphoria, he resolved to settle into the fantasia into which he found himself in the forest. He spent seven days in the utopia in that forest, after which Eshu returns him to the hard reality of the world in which he actually was. After settling his seventh heaven on fire and resulting infernal consumed everything except his bare self, Eshu woke him up only to realize that he was in the heart of the forest. He then began to run to nowhere, but Eshu once more accosted him, demanding a he-go from him. His guardian angel, who had meanwhile reproached him for failing to heed the advice before leaving heaven, gave him a he-go to give to Eshu. He gave the he-go to Eshu, who asked him whether he was then prepared to have regard for people stronger than himself, and he replied that he was. After eating his he-go, Eshu told him to turn to one direction to meet Orumila, or Ifa. He suddenly found himself back in his house. On getting home, his Eleni niece sent wife demanded a goat and pounded yam from him. He got a goat, slaughtered it, and invited people to his home for a feast. The following day, he invited the Awos to come and prepare Ifa for him. When they sounded Ifa for him, they told him of the experience he had had in the forest. His Ifa was then prepared over a seven-day period, in which he married a second wife who had several children for him. The wife sent to him by a lady and he left him, and he became moderately, moderately prosperous and lived to a ripe old age. In other words, he finally got his money. So this is to say, one, never failed to make it both. It also says never fail to take care of Eshu because Eshu can cause a problem in your life. So we are going to make this a bow uh, on December 30th uh, to ensure that Eshu is not causing problems and obstacles in our life. We're going to feed Ogun in order to ensure that we have a long and healthy and prosperous life. We're going to feed a locum in order to ensure that we have mental stability and financial stability in our lives. And we finally, we're going to feed the Arisha IJ to ensure that if we've had no wealth, that wealth starts to come to live in our house. That if we've already had money, that we will continue to retain that money. And that if there's new money to come, that the opportunities will easily come in our way. I look forward to seeing everybody uh, this tomorrow. This weekend, I hope that we all uh, are able to come together and have a beautiful Ebo. I hope that everybody is able to make it. Please have a wonderful, safe evening. I hope you enjoyed the Eshe Fa, and I will see you on tomorrow. Peace.